Stocks, bonds, ETFs, 401ks, and IRAs. All of these are fantastic long-term approaches to investing, proven over and over again by both amateurs and experts. Hell, even Warren Buffett recommends these approaches to your long-term investing. But these things aren't sexy. Quick money is sexy. And you know what's even hotter than that? Cryptocurrency. A lot of folks, including myself, thought that cryptocurrency was at one point quick, easy money. And like a lot of folks, I rushed into it as well. Why not throw a few bucks and ride the waves? Sure, some of the newer coins might be just that, quick, easy money or just gambling. But cryptocurrency as a whole is way much more than that. There are entire ecosystems built around cryptocurrency. And more and more companies are using the technologies to make their companies more efficient, innovative, and quicker responding to things inside of their own ecosystems. But we're not here to guide you on currencies and cryptocurrencies being used within companies. We're here to guide you on the viability of cryptocurrency being added to your long-term portfolios as a form of an alternative asset. These investments will definitely not be as weighted towards the cryptocurrency as they are towards the traditional assets that we talked about earlier. But cryptocurrencies can give your portfolio a boost if invest correctly within them. In order to keep supporting, please subscribe to the channel and like our videos because it helps it reach more users. The YouTube algorithm gets a little finicky when those things don't happen. So make sure you do just that in order to support the channel and our content. It takes two seconds of your time, but helps us exponentially. Now let's get started. Snack on this cryptocurrencies 101. Cryptocurrency is kind of synonymous with Bitcoin because, well, it kind of kicked off the entire ecosystem. It's the most well known because it started it all. Bitcoin was one of the first major cryptocurrencies to become mainstream. You heard about it in news outlets, TVs, Facebook, from your friends. It was everywhere, especially when it was exploding in value. But the ecosystem goes much beyond Bitcoin. To start, cryptocurrency is digital money. Now, some of you folks may say that, isn't my bank account digital money? The numbers appear they're digital, right? Well, this is a little different. It doesn't exist in paper form, but rather in virtual wallets. These virtual wallets can exist on an exchange, which is very, very similar to a broker that you would have for your stocks on your hard drive, on a flash drive for safe storage, or on a piece of paper that has that QR code for your wallet. Before I get attacked by all the crypto enthusiasts telling me that it's much more than just those features that I mentioned, pause. I'm trying to explain this in the most simple terms for everyone to be able to understand what cryptocurrency is. Therefore, there will be more than one lesson attributed to just cryptocurrency because it is such a huge topic. And by this, I hope to reduce the barrier to entry. So if anybody does feel like getting into crypto, you have the knowledge and the know-how to make your decision when getting into cryptocurrency for the very first time. Back to the lesson. Cryptocurrency is digital money. This digital money is decentralized. Let me explain this. Traditional money that you're used to, dollars, euros, pesos, whatever, are centralized currencies that are issued, created, and minted by the central bank. These are the folks that put the money into the money supply. For the United States, this central bank is the Federal Reserve, which a lot of you may have heard about in the news. Cryptocurrencies are primarily decentralized. These don't get printed or minted from a central banking system. Instead, they work through a distributed network 
called a blockchain. A blockchain is a list of records that contains raw data, including transaction data, between two parties that's verifiable by anyone who wants to verify that an exchange between two parties occurred. Think of the blockchain as a credit card statement. A credit card statement is permanent, which you can give to an accountant, check it yourself, but it's a permanent record of all of the money that you spent on your credit card, easily verifiable by the people that you give the statement to. So in essence, a blockchain doesn't necessarily say what you bought or how you purchased it. It just lets people on the network verify that transactions were made between two parties. Okay. The decentralized cryptocurrency is produced by the entire network simultaneously running together. This rate of issuance is a predefined rate when the cryptocurrency is set up and that rate is publicly known. For example, you have no idea how much the Federal Reserve is printing on a daily basis, but with cryptocurrency, for example, Bitcoin, you know how much it is going to be produced at exactly what rate it's going to be produced at and limits to the cryptocurrency if there are any is all publicly available information the federal reserve as an example of the centralized bank controls the supply of money by printing it and putting it into circulation cryptocurrency won't allow for companies governments or institutions to produce any new units and it also provides no backing for anybody invested in it. So it's kind of at your own risk type of situation. Block Geeks puts this in a very good way. Picture a spreadsheet that is duplicated multiple times across a network of computers. Then imagine that that network is designed to regularly update that spreadsheet as transactions occur using the power of those computers within that network. There is the basic understanding of blockchain. Blockchain is a constant reconciliation of data and it's very hard to hack because the data is literally dispersed into millions of locations on millions of machines, computers throughout the network. This allows the digital information to be distributed and copied, but never replaced or altered. The biggest value in cryptocurrency arguably lies in the blockchain technology for the various coins that do it. A lot of the coins, a lot of the different coins that you hear about, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, things like that are built on different types of blockchain technologies, which companies then take and utilize for their internal purposes. Therefore, as we mentioned earlier, the blockchain is the value added part of the cryptocurrency. Now, there are tons of different coins and there are tons of different cryptocurrencies that you can get into. A lot of these are derived from Bitcoin and are either faster, slower, produced at a higher rate, etc. You can go down the rabbit hole as far as you want. But their individual blockchains, as we mentioned before, give them a unique perspective to the entire realm of digital currency and give them another perspective than that of Bitcoin, which is the main one that started it all. And so, like we mentioned earlier, companies find value in these different blockchain technologies and therefore will pull them in and utilize them as they need. All right. This is a lot to spin your head around and certainly makes us dizzy too. In short, cryptocurrency doesn't act like a traditional currency. Cryptocurrency is a way to have more control over your money and your transactions by making them private to just you and the buyer or seller, but is verifiable on a public accounting ledger called the blockchain. This could be used for bad things, and it most definitely is throughout the world. But there's a lot of inherent good in cryptocurrency as well, if not for anything else, but for the value of the blockchain itself. It makes things a lot more efficient, a lot more effective, and it leads for a series of records that are created that cannot be hacked. That blockchain validates the cryptocurrency that it is tied to 
as the technology and as its value that's why you see the value of a lot of these coins increasing as more companies start to use the blockchain technology so to get started in bitcoin or just view the markets as a whole and to get a general sense of what we're talking about before our next lessons you guys should check out coinbase coinbase is an easy to use platform that will only charge you a percentage of your total transaction amount you can sign up completely free with the link in the description and that link in the description will give you ten dollars of free bitcoin when you make a purchase or sell a hundred dollars or more we definitely do recommend starting with a small investment in crypto and with a 10 percent bonus on that hundred dollars if you choose to start with that it's just an added bonus for you to get a bigger investment going in the beginning it may not seem like a lot but it is a great form of an alternative investment for the long term it's kind of one of those set it and forget it type of things again don't overwhelm those deposits into your cryptocurrency account because at this point it is kind of still a wild wild west type of situation but as more and more companies get into the blockchain technology you see the value of these coins increasing exponentially we will get deeper into the mechanics of cryptocurrency and why we don't shy away from investing at regular intervals. But in the meantime, check out Coinbase, open an account via the link below and get familiar with it so you can keep up. This lesson is meant to be as a form of groundwork for you when it comes to crypto, blockchain technology and everything that we've mentioned earlier. That's why we're trying to keep these lessons a little more bite-sized and easy to understand as we go forward. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And again, please like this video and subscribe if you find it helpful. Until next week, check out Coinbase, look at a few crypto names that interest you, and keep investing.